Hey, this is Tyler Basu. Welcome to Teach Online TV. And I am here with Brandon Hassler, the founder and CEO of Market Campus, which is a premier digital marketing course and certification program. And he's helped students from all over the world upgrade their digital marketing skills. So he's a very uh, accomplished entrepreneur, online marketer, and course creator. We're going to talk about a lot of different cool things today. Brandon, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to do the interview. Thanks for having me. So I know I, uh, I gave away a little bit of your story there, but if you could just really quickly tell us how you got into this world. I mean, what, what were you doing before and how'd you, how'd you become, you know, the, the founder and CEO of Market Campus and, and what are you focused on now? Yeah, so I started out uh, working at an agency here in Utah called 97th Floor and we were able to work with a ton of cool clients like Adobe, ESPN, Dell computers, like a lot of huge uh, brands as well as a lot of small companies. And as I was doing that there, I just, I started seeing like all these coding boot camps pop up, which uh, are getting really big, especially here in the US, uh, various schools where you can just go and learn to code. So that was my original idea was, man, this boot camp phenomenon is like really taking off but there's nothing for like marketing and specifically marketing online. And as I would interview people at uh, the old agency I was at, I would notice that a lot of the marketing graduates did not have like the day to day knowledge of like how to actually execute campaigns. It's very high level in universities, very slow moving. So I wanted to do something where somebody could come in and in a very fast pace, learn everything they need. Like what are the tools that you need to be using? Uh, what are the good resources that you can go to get inspiration and start learning? So we started a, uh, it was just a boot camp, like in person. We didn't have online courses at the time and they were only available here in Utah. And we were teaching that. And about a year and a half into that is when we realized we started getting a lot more demand from outside of the state as well as outside of the country. And so we started looking into online courses, which I knew going into it, I, I knew it was going to be very competitive. I know now that it was way more competitive than I thought it was. Um, <laughs> and I would look at a lot of the different marketing courses out there and I just didn't like the flow, especially like the teach, like I'm sure the curriculum in many of them is, is okay, but I just didn't like the style of how the courses flowed and they were all very just like PowerPoint presentations. And I wanted to create an experience that made you feel like you were in the classroom with us, like very interactive. So that was kind of my journey, I guess, slowly from, you know, actually being a full-time professional digital marketer and slowly going over to the education slash consulting side. Yeah. Okay. No, very cool. So you were doing, you were doing boot camps for a while and I guess you got to a point where there were more people wanting to learn from you than you could accommodate in these live boot camps. And, and I, I mean, one of the things about a live boot camp is people need to physically get there, uh, don't they? Mm -hmm. And so that kind of limits you in terms of, you know, maybe people from other cities want to learn from you, but they can't, they can't take the flight or they can't take the time off or all those kinds mm -hmm. of factors. So for you, you got into online courses as a way to serve more people, um, teaching them the same thing that you're teaching in these boot camps right yeah and we uh we so i guess backtracking i originally looked into the online courses to supplement the in-person just because i'm a big fan of uh, flipped learning so students can actually go through the lectures the curriculum on their own time and then spend class time actually you know questioning things practicing uh, working things out and that way they're not wasting their time just going to class to listen to lectures um, but as we we're going through that process, it's like, man, this is really good stuff. Let's just like actually package this for people. You know, we could do it at a cheaper price for people who just want to be self-paced. And uh, yeah, so uh, I guess uh, the thing that pushed us was a lot of emails coming in and saying, I can't afford or I don't have time to go to Utah. I mm -hmm. want to learn though. When are you guys going to come to New York? When are you guys going to come here? And uh, online was the ease must like I mean it's the easiest most profitable way to do that just because your overhead for online course courses are extremely yeah. low. <laughs> yeah, much uh, much cheaper than uh, than booking the uh, the conference room at a hotel, right? Uh huh. Uh, so can you take us uh, take us back to when you created an online course for the first time? What what was that process like for you? Um, and what was your strategy for for getting the word out and getting people enrolled in the course? 
So on the actual creation side, it was very difficult, more difficult than I thought it would be. We had all of our, at the time we just had, you know, several decks of like PowerPoint presentations that we would use for class. And I thought it would be as easy as, oh, we're just going to take this and then just kind of turn it into online stuff. Uh, but when we're recreating every single section, it was very difficult because it's one like it's easy to explain in person but how do we convey that to an online audience where we can't just like pop up a demo of something like we could in a live class and so kind of adapting to how can we effectively teach online because we don't just want people to get the information we want them like we want to format it in a way where they're forced to stop and learn and whatnot so that was kind of the course creation process. It took us about six months to convert all of our bootcamp curriculum into online. I'm sure everyone listening to this could probably do it way faster, but my biggest issue is I'm like a huge perfectionist and it slows everything down, but I didn't want to like launch until it was perfect. And so at that time, that's when we just started. I mean, at first it was a lot of like Facebook ads, kind of getting the word out and uh, you know, we teach a lot of SEO. So of course we uh, have been putting a, a fairly big focus on that, just kind of slowly growing organic. Mm -hmm. But since then I would say the stuff that has really helped offline at least. So in the U S there is this organization that's in many cities throughout the country called 1 million cups. And so, I mean, if anyone is watching this and they are starting their course, I mean, the bottom line is you are an entrepreneur, uh, whether you believe it or not, you're starting a business, even though you may look at it as, Oh, I'm just creating side income. Like it's a business. It's, 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 it's an entrepreneurial endeavor. And 1 million cups are these really cool events. They're free for anybody to attend. They hold them every Wednesday morning throughout the country. You can just go to 1 million cups.com and you can speak, you just, you know, say, Hey, I want to talk about my startup. So it's really cool because it's just this big uh, group of entrepreneurs coming together. And each week you hear like one or two businesses talk about like their startup, their idea, and then you get feedback from them. And that was huge for us to be able to say, here's what we're trying to accomplish. You know, here's what we've done so far. What do you guys think? And those questions from like all these different perspectives was extremely valuable because they were perspectives that I hadn't thought about before. And I think that's one flaw that a lot of course creators make is they have it in their mind of how it's supposed to work out and they just stick to it and everyone else is wrong. <laughs> and uh, I've been guilty of that, uh, you know, for several periods throughout Market Campus. But I've learned that the feedback you get from people is extremely valuable. So that was one, I, starting out, that was probably our big thing was like physical, like networking events with people who are either entrepreneurs or like our demographic, yeah. just getting out there and meeting people. Cool, cool. So if, uh, when you, for one of the more recent courses you created, or if you were to create a, a course from scratch today, do you think it would take you six months or, or have you got a, a, a faster process now? <laughs> uh, I have a slightly faster, I've slowly learned like how to kind of batch a lot of stuff. So if like we're, if we're gonna record seven videos, just plan them all out and then record them all at once and then do all the text. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm now learning to delegate more. So we're getting copywriters on board cool. who can help us. Cause I suck at like writing and my grammar is horrible. And so I don't want that to be in the course where like it reads very yeah. poorly. So bring like sucking it up and bringing on people who are good at what they do is, uh, it's worth the investment. So I, I think I could do it in probably about half the time, but that's being optimistic. I'm sure I'd find a way to stretch it out to, <laughs> six okay. plus months cool cool uh, so are the uh, when it comes to actually creating the modules for your courses is it mostly screen share is it powerpoint is it live video what what types of content are you typically putting into a course um it's a pretty healthy mix of uh everything so we do a lot of uh so we don't ha have like any like pdfs and stuff like that i know some courses do that where it's like download this pdf and it's like 36 pages and then you got like take a quiz after mm. I would take those 36 pages and maybe break that into a bunch of chapters and sections and so I try to make it so the average text section isn't you know shouldn't take more than five minutes to read should be super short I mean most of them are very short and then we have a lot of whiteboard videos so that's one thing that's a little bit more unique about us is some people just kind of have talking head in front of a green screen with some graphics coming up nothing wrong with that. We just kind of want to take a more fun approach 
uh, and I like whiteboards uh, just because I think it keeps the person's attention. So we try as much as possible to have a human in front of the camera and not just a screencast. We do have the occasional screencasts, but if you are doing screencasts, sometimes it's even better just to have yourself in the corner. And it just gives, like I've noticed that I've paid attention to a lot of like webinars and screencasts uh, at a longer rate when I can see the person in the bottom corner of my screen. Cause I kind of just like, I, humans naturally connect with humans. It's just a fact of how we're built. And so the more you can have a human face in front of the learner, the more they're gonna be paying attention versus text and video and quizzes that gets old very quick. And they need that human interaction, especially when it's they're alone in a room learning online like it can get lonely if you don't have those human faces yeah yeah no, no that makes sense good uh, good advice there uh in terms of uh like equipment and like software and stuff for you know actually recording these modules editing were there any you know favorite programs or or recording equipment that you were using yeah so i wanted to i mean at the time we did not have a lot of money to spend on like high-end equipment and i know some people do that they invest a ton of money only for it to flop and now they've got all this expensive equipment they need to sell. So I wanted to do everything like very cheap, but at the same time, not sacrifice quality. So the equipment that we use, I'm looking around at some of our, so we technically, if you, if you were to look in the back of this, we'd have like our whiteboard and like studio set up. But uh, so we use a, a Canon uh, Rebel T3i, which was like a $350 camera. Uh, it's mainly used for photos, but it can record HD for like 10 minutes at a time. So mm -hmm. that does the job as, as far as the mic, which we were going to use for this. But as you and I know, it did not have success with hooking up to this computer. I use a, uh, it's called the Audio-Technica. It's like a lav mic and I got it for like 20 bucks. And it's a huge improvement over standard computer audio, camera audio. Mm -hmm. So we use that and then uh, lighting. I'm like, lighting for me is very important. I just like, it makes the video feel 10 times better. And it sounds expensive because when we think of lighting, we think of like an expensive NBC studio or something like that. But uh, you can go onto Amazon and get a lighting set for like 110 bucks. And uh, it's that alone. So that's like the main stuff. And then the software, we started out just using iMovie, which we could still use iMovie today and be just fine. Now we use Final Cut Pro. Uh, just gives us a little bit more custom customization over it. And then for our screen grabs or for our screen casts, we use a program called Screen Flick. It's only for Mac. I know there's a million and, and Thinkific has done a good job, a, a lot of good resources with different screencasting software, but one of my favorite has been Screen Flick. It's like 28 bucks, one-time fee, and then you own it on your computer, and that's been super smooth to use. So that's pretty much it, like super, super basic setup. And uh, yeah, the big focus is just on the curriculum, and that, I've been learning that. I've been focusing more on the curriculum now than I was. I was a little too obsessed with video quality and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Just realized. And then another tip, I guess, we've been surveying our students a lot, asking them what their favorite elements are because I just like for me I'm very visual I like video but it's been surprising that the whiteboard videos that we do have been they're still popular but people like like the step-by-step -step, uh, modules where it's like a, you know a screenshot with some directions a screenshot so we've been doing a lot more of those and I wouldn't have known that if I just didn't simply ask my students like hey help us out like we want to make this better what are the elements that you hate and you don't hate and that's something that I don't think a lot of course creators take the time to do is actually engage with their audience to see what they can improve. Yeah. Okay. No. Awesome. I, I'm glad you brought up the point that, you know, you didn't spend a whole bunch of money to create that first course, you know, getting all the fancy equipment without really figuring out if, you know, the course is going to flop or not, if people are actually going to buy it or not. You bought the best equipment um, that you could afford without compromising the quality of the course and so it sounded like you know with a, a few hundred bucks on equipment and software was enough to create a decent course uh, and since then I mean you probably you know you've upgraded a few things like you're, you're now using Adobe uh, Final Cut which is a bit more of an expensive software but um, I think that's an important point you brought up that you don't need you know thousands of dollars in equipment and software the first time uh, you know you can upgrade to those things later once you've proven that people are willing to buy your courses and maybe you're committed to making more courses for them as well. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. Um, so you've got quite a few courses on uh, Market Campus, which is on uh, on Thinkific, um, as we know. But did, when you created your first course, did was it on Thinkific, or have you tried other other platforms as well? Yeah, our first course was Thinkific. Uh, I spent probably oh three months like researching obsessively between all of the options out there, and I stumbled upon Thinkific because I was like down between two other options, and I saw Greg's post in a Quora post which still ranks well when I look at like course creation platforms and his response, you know, forced me, I looked into it. I'm like, Oh, this is like extremely affordable compared to everything else because all these other ones, like they're cheap up front. But then when you like get in to start building, it's like, Oh, this is an additional $50 a month. This is an additional a hundred a month. Plus we want to take a giant cut of your revenue on top of like the huge fees that you're already paying. And I was like, we're going to go out of business if we do this. Like we're basically bringing in like an equity partner who gets half of our revenue and we've never <laughs> even met them. So Thinkific was awesome. Not only just, be, I mean, the pricing was great, but uh, the platform for the learners that we get so much good feedback from our students about how much they love like the flow and how minimalistic it is. It's just a really good, platform. So I have been recommending Thinkific to many, many people and encouraging them like you got to get an online course and use Thinkific. It's easy to use. All right, right on. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that recommendation. And I know exactly which Quora post uh, you were referring to. It's somebody <laughs> asked the question, you know, which platform can I use to create an online course or something? And Greg's response yeah. is still number one there. So it's good to know that you know, answering questions on Quora brings in customers because we tell people that, that that's a good way to promote your course is to, uh, mm-hmm. Go find people who are asking about your topic on Quora, give a really good response. And if they love your response and you link back to your site, they can figure out who you are and what you do from there. So it sounds like that's exactly how you found Thinkific in the first place was that response from Craig. Yep. Yeah. Quora is insanely powerful. And I know a lot of people watching this are busy people like, like you and I. And so the easy way to kind of automate that is just to use a Google alerts. Yep. And I, I just have it set up so that, you know, I just do site colon Quora.com and then phrases like marketing, digital marketing. So every day I wake up, I just have an email uh, with all of the questions around marketing and I can just go through real quick and pick and choose. And that way you're not having to remember to like go to Quora every day and search all of this stuff. There's so many little tools like that that can make your life 10 times easier. And yeah, the ROI in Quora is insane. It's one of our biggest lead sources is Quora, so you've definitely got to be on there to promote your courses and just provide value. Don't go on there and spam, obviously, but like answer the question. And Greg did a good job about that. He didn't just say, check out Thinkific. He actually like outlined, like here's what you should be looking for. Here's some decent things, you know, and full disclosure, I own Thinkific. Yeah. Feel free to check it out. And that was enough for me to be like, let's check it out. Cool, cool, right on. Um, so I think this is, uh, we're, you know, we're touching on marketing a little bit here, um, which is something I wanted to talk to you about because obviously you've been marketing things online for a long time. You have courses that teach people digital marketing. So uh, when it comes to marketing your courses, what are like maybe the top two or three methods of marketing your course that have been most effective for you? And if we could just dive into those a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I, me- I mentioned this at the beginning, every course creator is an entrepreneur, like it-, it is a startup in a sense. And so it needs to be treated like a business. And if you, if you go through, like I just went through like a really good entrepreneur boot camp about a year ago. And, uh, you know, there's this thing called the lean startup method, which is kind of the new way of starting businesses because before startups are taught in colleges, just like running a fortune 500 company, which is completely different. And a big thing they teach is that there needs to be a problem and a solution. You should be able to describe your company within that. What's the problem? What's your solution? And if you can't do that as a course creator, don't waste your time getting into it because a lot of people just think like, Oh, I'm good at this. I'm just going to go ahead and create a course and make money. And it's very possible to do that, but you have to identify what is the unique solution that you're offering. And then the key is to go out and validate it. So uh, one of the things I did, a lot of people don't realize that you can export your emails on uh, LinkedIn. So if if you're connected to 700 people, go into your connections and on the right, there's a little export button and you get the email address of every single person you're connected with, which is crazy. Some of the emails I have of like, because a lot of like very influential people just kind of accept everyone. I don't think they realize that their email is technically available to anyone who exports. So what I do is I then email all those people and I just say, Hey, you know, we're LinkedIn connections. I wanted to get your feedback on something. Could we schedule like a 15 minute call 
and I just want to get your feedback on my course. And then I would usually email them like a login to one of my Thinkific courses, let them check it out. You know, you could put like an expiration on it if you want. But that was super valuable because it's not a sales pitch to them. It was like they're helping an entrepreneur out. And that's how I posed it. And on the call, I wasn't ever like salesy, but many of them turned into customers because they saw the value and then they felt valued because, you know, you kind of stroke their ego a little bit by saying, I want your expertise on this. They give their suggestions, you make them, and then now they're, you know, a customer. And so that is a very, very valuable um, starting out. And as far as like today's marketing, our biggest things, you know, I mentioned Quora is big. Instagram, surprisingly, uh, does send us a lot of traffic. And one of my favorite tools for Instagram is called Instagress. Dot com. It's a paid kind of Twitter automation. It sounds spammy when you first hear about it, but it's like, it's super legit when you use it. Uh, you're not like buying followers or stuff like that. Like you're, you're doing real activity. And I know a lot of like super legit well-known companies that I've learned use Instagress and they love it. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing we do is we just kind of follow hashtags and users who are related to our audience, which in our case, it's entrepreneurs, startups, marketing teams. And uh, YouTube has been, and I'm sure you guys have seen that with Thinkific, uh, YouTube has surprisingly done very, very well in terms of uh, pulling new customers or just pulling people who have never heard of us in and then slowly, you know, they become a subscriber and then eventually they become a student. So I'm a big fan of YouTube and, and especially with course creation, like anyone who's in course development you should be doing YouTube videos. And I know the initial concern is, but then I'm giving all my stuff away for free. And the bottom line is, is everything everybody is teaching is already out there in the web. They're paying because you've organized the information in a easy way to learn. And so you can still go out there on YouTube and do an Instagram story or a Snapchat thing and give some advice, a Facebook Live, which is another thing that Thinkific has been killing it in, is doing some really good Facebook Live sessions. Um, it's just a way to gain trust, provide value, and that really is the key to everything. And I have noticed one little uh, YouTube hack, it's been my favorite lately, is a lot of people don't realize, or I guess they realize, they don't utilize YouTube analytics. And so every video, like once you publish a video, wait about three weeks and then go into the analytics and look at where the average retention rate is. So if you have an 11 minute video, you might find that the average person drops at four minutes and 20 seconds. So go into the video and then add an annotation about 20 seconds before that mark. And just because statistically that's when they're losing attention. So we started doing that where we would just identify where the drop was, add an annotation there rather than just the end of the video. And uh, it has increased traffic big time from YouTube. So little Very stuff cool. like that you can do, but the overall thing is identify where the attention is of your demographic and be there. And yeah. Facebook groups is another thing that has been really beneficial for us. And the mistake that I don't want people to make uh, is they, they tend to hang out in communities where other people are like experts as well. So like if I'm selling marketing courses, you might think that I should go join marketing communities. But those are full of other marketers who either know or think they know everything about marketing. So they're not going to be customers. So we've been making a much better effort at let's hang out in startup communities, people who are learning how to start a business. Uh, like these are not professional marketers. These are the people that are actually becoming customers. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's tempting to kind of hang out with other people like you when they're not ever going to be customers because they're just like you. They already know. And so, uh, but Facebook groups is insane how effective it is. Uh, I would say it's up there with Quora in terms of connecting with people and building that trust and, and pulling in new clients, students, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I've seen people not just have success with, with joining groups, but in starting their own group because then they're kind of positioned as that leader on whatever that group topic is about. And just because mm -hmm. they're the one who initiated the group itself, it's kind of like the person who hosts a party, you know, people come to the party, they interact with each other, but you get, you get to take credit for making all of that happen because you're the one who created the party in the first place. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big fan of, of doing that with creating communities that aren't about your course or your company, uh, but the conversation is happening in your house. Yeah. rather than someone else's house, which is a big benefit, like you said.
And so I like that approach. Cool. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for sharing those. So just to just to recap, I mean, we touched on um, we touched on LinkedIn connections. You know, emailing your link your LinkedIn connections in a non spammy way, Instagram, YouTube. Facebook groups. Um, I mean, these are all places where a lot of people are hanging out. And so you just got to tap into tap into those platforms in the right way. And you can, uh, you can, you know, end up connecting with and attracting a lot of people who might end up taking your course. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've got a yeah. couple more questions for you, Brandon, and, and then and then we'll, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Now for the for somebody who's like on the fence a little bit about creating an online course or they're thinking of creating one or they've started but they haven't quite finished and they just need a, like a little bit of motivation to to actually complete their first course and get it online could you uh, maybe inspire us in some way just tell us like how creating online courses how teaching online has impacted your life uh, and your business as well if you like uh, I mean just tell us you know what's what's different about your life now now that since you made that decision to teach online uh, I've definitely met, uh, I mean, a ton of people, I mean, including just the connections at like Thinkific. I mean, that's, you know, obviously who we're creating our courses with, but through Thinkific, I've been able like, in the, you know, Thinkific has a really good Facebook uh, group slash community, and I've been able to meet a lot of cool people through there. But uh, online is, I mean, I believe that online is going to play a huge role in education, just in general. We're seeing colleges adapt or slowly adapt, way slower than I would like them to adapt. But uh, online, like people, we're in an era where people are all about self-educating themselves. We don't like to hop on a phone anymore and like get, you know, talk to a salesman about the pricing. We like to see the pricing, we like to then go on to Quora and all these different sites and do the research. Even if it's like a $10 product, we're just like wired now where it's like, can I get a better deal? And then we go around, we educate ourselves. And so as we get more and more comfortable with technology, which we definitely are, uh, online is going to be the preferred way. And I don't think anybody, and I guess this is a knock on market campus as well. I don't think anybody has like nailed online learning yet. I think we're progressing each year. It's just like an overall industry. We're getting better, but there's still elements about an in-person class that haven't been replicated yet. And I don't know if that will change when everyone's wearing VR headsets. I don't know, but uh, it's worth investing in now. And so even if you're consulting, and I've talked to a lot of consultants who are just now getting into online course creation because they realize they're telling their clients the same thing over and over again and they get more expensive and they can't meet they can't meet with these people who can't afford them but they could afford to like just hop onto my course and i teach all the stuff that i would tell you uh you'll, you they may find that they're going to make more money that way than trying to like pick up clients and go to these meetings and whatnot so for those people who are on the fence uh i mean just hit publish and i love looking in the think if community where people are like i finally hit publish and uh and it's just you know everyone's like giving a huge pat in the back but it's, uh, it really has changed just because it allows you to, I mean, you're talking about a scalable business. It doesn't get much more scalable than online course creation. It's very similar to, especially if you're doing like a subscription model, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, you're almost like having your own little SaaS product, but it's something that can also change lives. And so you, you can feel good about what you're doing at the same time that you're like giving valuable information to other people and you're, you're hearing those success stories. And you're never going to experience that if you don't hit publish, if you don't go on and create a course. So just about every business out there, even if you're just using it for lead gen to your main product, uh, online courses is just, it's a no brainer for, for me at least. And tools like Thinkific make it insanely easy to collect the money and um, set up the course. Like there's so many great integrations with Thinkific. I know you're, not trying to get me to promote Thinkific, but I keep doing, it's, it's a fantastic tool. And yeah, you've got to, that's my advice is you just got to do it. And you're, you're never going to know if it's going to work or not. If you just sit there and make excuses and like, I don't have time. I can't do this. Yeah. Always excuses to do stuff. Right on. No, no that's great advice. I appreciate you sharing that with us. And uh, I think that, that that'll give some people a bit of a push if they needed a push to get into creating their first online course. Um, so last question for you. Is there, is there one, one lesson, one piece of advice, one thing we didn't touch on? Uh, maybe something that you wish someone told you when you were first getting into this? Is there anything you'd like to wrap up with? 
Um, I would say the big thing that I've learned, and I think I did a, a Thinkific post a while back, and, and I may have mentioned this, but uh, I, the lesson I wish I knew early on was that you, should, you need to be selling the solution, not the product. And so in my case specifically, it was, hey, here's a digital marketing course where you can learn SEO and PPC and content marketing, and here's the price. And it does, it, it, the message never really talked about how is this gonna help you? Like the reason we buy a SaaS product is because it's going to you know, increase our, uh, our social views or we hire a fitness trainer. They're not selling the fact that they're gonna go and like wake you up every day and do sit-ups. They're selling the beach body that you really want. And so as course creators, and you can use Hotjar, which is a great tool to kind of analyze how people are interacting with your message, but look at your message and your, your homepage, your course pages, and just ask yourself, am I, um, am I selling like the solution? Like, am I selling what they're going to get? Or am I talking more about the bells and whistles of the course and not what they're gonna get? Because that's every product that we buy, we buy it because we're buying into the solution, not what it does specifically. And uh, I think that very much applies to course creation and one of the I guess the way I came to that was I finally sucked up my ego a little bit there there is humility involved but going to communities and just posting your home page and asking for feedback you'll be surprised how many people are happy to give you feedback uh, if you're a think if it customer go into the think if it group and post your page and just get feedback and I know you guys do you know the what was it Course Clash, I forget what it's called exactly. Yeah, but. yeah. and I think we, we started up uh, the Flaunted Fridays as well, so uh, everyone can post what, the, you know, they can show off what they've created uh, on, the, on a comment thread every week. Yeah, yeah, so always be in learning mode. Uh, don't get sucked up into the, uh, the illusion that if you ask for help, that means you don't know what you're doing, yeah. because the smart ones know that the great teachers are also great learners. Mm -hmm. And uh, so put yourself out there, you know, expect to get criticism, but you're never going to grow if you don't do that. And I wish I knew that early on because uh, I would have avoided so much wasted money on ads going to pages that were just worthless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, right on. That was great advice, Brandon. I really appreciate it. And uh, if our audience wants to get in touch with you, learn more about you, learn more about your courses, where's the best place we can send them? Uh, you can go to marketcampus.com and uh, check out the courses there. Uh, other than that, if you want to email me directly, I mean, you can contact us through the website and, and I'll get copied on it. But otherwise, you can just shoot me an email, brandon at marketcampus.com. And uh, happy to answer any questions that anybody has about their courses or just general marketing questions. Happy to help. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. We'll see you.